show starts in
Taken to the last in the series of the Artist Heart Live. I am your lovable, exhausted, very sweaty host, John Morris, and it is a sheer delight to be here with you today. Boy, what a show we have got in store for you. We're going to take you on a little tour around Lincoln, where Katie and I were uh, a couple of weeks ago with my parents. We're going to show you inside Lincoln Cathedral. Oh, boy. And, and all around Lincoln, there is so many really, really cool places that are there. So many amazing little villages we're going to be bringing to you, wherever you are watching this around the world. What else? We're also going to be bringing you um, your three minutes of ultimate energy and pure funny pet videos. I'll also be performing once more with the season finale song. Uh, that'll be at the end of the show. And uh, we're going to be painting. We're going to be going back in time with so many things. And I'm going to begin to share with you all that stuff that's been going on. But, folks, i got to say, first of all, thank you so much for watching and for helping our little channel grow so much during this time. I have to say... Putting this show together, there's been a lot of really cool experiences that I've had over the last five years or so, um, and even more so than that. But putting this show together over the last however many weeks this has been, you know, it has been a blast. I've learned things about myself. I've found my own voice and confidence as well, you know, and it has just been a sheer delight to be with you guys on this stage at this time, you know, which is such an exciting time for me, for Katie, for everybody that's working with us um, as we get ready to launch the brand new book series, which is going to be called Art Through the Ages. Um, it is the ultimate work of historical fiction and of time travel. It is the ultimate time traveling adventure. It is something that has been 10 years in the making and has taken at least two years to write. And we're getting very, very close now. So I'm delighted. Um, and we'll still be posting on social media. So if you haven't already, make sure to follow us on Instagram at the John Morris. Make sure to check out our brand new website at thejohnmorris.co.uk, which is going to be launched very, very, very soon. I'm just putting somewhat of the final touches to it. We're getting all products and everything uploaded. And as you guys and girls know, we got a lot of products. Um, whether it be self-help, whether it be art, whether it be books, whether it be you name it, we've got it up there. Um, what else? We have uh, follow us on John Morris Art from the Heart as well. Follow us somewhere on social media and you can keep in touch with us and we would love to hear from you. Um, but it's been a sheer blast. As I was saying right at the top of the show, Katie and I were down in Lincolnshire uh, seeing my parents uh, for the first time in a, in a little while. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we also got to spend the the day with them watching the uh, Queen's funeral. Uh, that was part of the reason of not being on last week, uh, and just plus when we got back, there were so many things. It was really, really busy. Um, and it was, you know, we, we sat like so many just watching the Queen's funeral. It was such a poignant and emotional day and emotional time, and, um, you know, it really... I think in many ways brought out the best in an entire nation. In some ways it brought out the worst in an entire nation. I think, as I've said so many times before, the internal life will always reflect the external. So if you are someone who has love in your heart and you're going around and you're smiling and you're always looking for the best, then that is what you're going to find. If you're someone who is constantly hating the world, and feeling that you've always been dealt a hard blow and nothing is ever, ever good enough or anything like that, then that's also what you're going to find. And a lot of that I saw, you know, uh, a lot of it kind of saddened me in many ways, but there was a lot there that really, really made me happy. Um, you know, a lot of wonderful people there. So, folks, part of the reason of this being the last episode in the series is because I'm about to start back at university. And I'm studying at the Open University at the moment for a doctorate in psychology. It's a long journey. There's a long road still ahead. But um, I'm learning a, a tremendous amount. Some of the stuff I'm, I'm relearning, some of the stuff that I'm already confirming that, that, that I already knew and studied. Um, but also, some of this stuff is just really cool to be thinking, you know, I'm going to be getting a degree at this, you know, I'm going to be getting a doctorate. Uh, because it means the, the information that I'm able to teach for you guys, you know, regarding the mind-body-soul connection um, and how that has to be in alignment, really for you to feel at your best and to be at your best, um, you know, is, is going to be so powerful. And plus, when you're a doctor in psychology, it opens a heck of a lot of doors. Plus, Dr. John Morris sounds really, really good, don't you think? I, I like it. It's going to look really good on my on my books, you know, John Morris BSc and then John Morris Masters and uh, John Morris, uh, you know, Doctor in Psychology. But it's a tremendous amount of fun and that's why we put on this show for you because it was 30 minutes of pure energy every single Friday when you've had a hard week, you've been out there working really, really long hours, you come home, you know, I don't know what you're coming home to. It might be family, it might be difficult marriage, it might be in-laws, it might be outlaws. 
But whatever it is, we wanted to give you something, a place where you could just be and have an amazing time. And I hope we've done that. I really hope we've done that. And I hope that you've enjoyed it as well. Um, of course, you can go back to the beginning and watch the entire series all over again. But uh, yeah, it's a tremendous amount of fun. So we are also going to hit off with Ask John. But before we get there, let's let's stop me from talking for a start. And let's go over and see some cute pets or something, shall we? Is that a f***ing cat? Hey, don't f***ing look at me like that. <laughs> you don't like the vacuum or what? Wednesday dinner because I'm so hungry I want to eat then promptly go to sleep week's Ask John comes all the way from Maryland, USA, from Jordan Learman. This is a question for all authors that are out there, and it simply says, John, what are three things that you could see and teach to a beginning author? Great question, Jordan. And it just so happens that I have a brand new course out on Udemy called How to Become a Best-Selling Author and How to Write Your First Novel. So you can check that out on Udemy, um, John Morris, and you'll find me. Or just click the link below. Um, so the answer is really, really simple. I'll give you the same advice that was given to me by Margaret Atwood on her masterclass course. And it is this, hold my attention. Hold my attention. In this crazy, crazy world in which we live in, um, you've got to hold my attention. That is why I dress the way that I do. I speak at the speed that I do. And I give you pure energy every single minute of every single show that we put out here. Um, 
So it's really important that you hold my attention. Three other things are really important as well. Your beginning, your middle, and your end. They will literally be the uh, reasons for people staying, the reasons for people reading, and the reasons for people buying again. So your beginning needs to be phenomenal. It doesn't need to be long. It just needs to get people interested. Okay, so for example, you can call me Ishmael is the start of Moby Dick. Uh, in the beginning, the child, uh, the Malleys were dead is the start of A Christmas Carol. Um, you know, you, and, and you can pick out anything. You know, you can give people the end of a story um, right at the beginning of the book. So I was covered in blood. I had no idea what I was going to do. I was walking out into the, 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 the wet, soaked, damp streets. Uh, I had literally nothing to defend myself with, but I knew I was the only one that could stop him. Out into the night I fled like a thief in the darkness, my shadows even afraid to tread with me. I was alone, so alone. And there he was, waiting for me. But in order for this to make any sense at all, I'm going to have to start at the beginning. And that's what you can do. You can literally start at the end and work your way backwards, which is the advice I give people for goal setting. Uh, when it comes to the middle, you need to give people a reason to stay invested, to stay reading. So it's what I call the Big Bang Effect, okay? So... For all you scientists out there, mathematical geniuses, you will know that science believes that the world was created by a Big Bang. When God created the universe, I'm sure there was a heck of a lot of noise going on, even though there was n no sound. Um, but we'll play with it. It sounds good. Um, but it's really, really interesting. When the world has expanded, the universe has expanded as far and far and far as it can go, then what you have is that is the Big Bang. Um, and then what you have in your middle point is what's called the Great Crunch. And what happens is when the universe is expanded out as far as it can, it then starts contracting in on itself, eating everything until literally there is nothing left in the entire universe. And that's what your middle point is all about. It should be um, things are as bad as they can be, things as dramatic as they be. Um, you know, your lead character is struggling as much as he can be. Um, everything seems like it is filled with insurmountable odds. The clouds are so dark and gray, it's miserable. It's everything is tough. Tough, 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 if you're writing that kind of novel. The purpose then of your end is to bring it all together. By the time that person reads the final page of your book, if it's one book, if it's, you know, seven books in the case of Harry Potter, um, if it's, you know, 20 books in the series, each one should get you closer and closer to that goal where the problem has been um, pulled apart as much as it can. Um, you know, where things are as, as bad and as dramatic as they're going to get. And then all you need to do is start bringing it closer to closer together. So when the person reads that last page, everything's been concluded. Everything's been wrapped up. Don't try and be clever. Um, I think I would suggest don't try and be too clever and leave things open ended uh, unless you're planning to continue the story or something. People like conclusions. It's the way our brain works. You know, you wouldn't sing Twinkle Twinkle um, without finishing the words because it would bother you. It's this need for closure that majority of human beings have. So phenomenal beginning, great middle, give me a reason to stay going and a spectacular end. And I think you will do really, really well with your book. And I hope that helps. Well, folks, I believe now we are going to head off and... Um, we are going to take you, I think, actually, the next on the agenda is a little tour around Lincolnshire. So I hope you enjoy this. Run with us. 
fun mopping the floor. I'm not reading a comic book. It's an art book. These are some sketches by a Japanese artist called Hokuzai. <laughs> and I'm not really mopping the floor. I drew huh? a dentatastic bird with a mop, and you're on its back. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I just read about Hokuzai doing the same thing in Japan a long, long time ago. <laughs> wow, Dada. I love it. Now you're on the bird's back. <laughs> you know what they call this? An artistic happening. <laughs> Just like I happened to do art while I was mopping the floor. <laughs> well, usually there's a crowd, and they watch the artist perform art as it's happening. Hokuzai was famous for doing that. For drawing a big bird with a mop? Just like I did? I'm Dada <laughs> Happening! <laughs> he did all kinds of stuff. Hokuzai was very daring and didn't like to follow the traditional way of doing things. He was known as that crazy artist who broke all the rules. In front of a lot of people, he would do crazy things like paint two little birds on a tiny grain of rice. Whoa, two little birds on a grain of rice. That is zing. <laughs> yep. Sometimes he would huh? paint with his fingers or toothpicks or both hands at the same time. And one time, he spread out hundreds of sheets of paper outside a temple square and everyone was wondering what he was up to. He had a broom and a big bucket of ink, and yep, just like you, he drew a big picture. No one could tell what he was drawing because it was too big. They could only see him running around making lines everywhere. I can see what he painted. A big picture of a funny looking guy. That amazing. Huh? Yeah, that's what he drew. 
a giant portrait of the patriarch of Zen Buddhism. Let's go, Maddie. Let's go visit Hokusai, the daring artist. Whoa! 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 Exciting! <laughs> Good dog. You were so unpredictable. It was crazy. <laughs> huh? Ah, yes. Crazy and unpredictable. Keep things interesting. Just ride the waves and go with the flow. We sure did, all right. And the wave brought us here to Hokusai, the great artist. Ah, uh, I'm just an old man mad about a drawing. Actually, I've changed my name to that. Wakio Rojin. But one day, I will be a great artist. When I was <laughs> your age, I was sketching everything. And as an adult, I have produced an infinity of works with some reputation. But nothing I did before the age of 70 is worth any attention. When oh. I am 80, huh? I will have penetrated the true essence of things. And when I am 140 years old, <laughs> then every stroke I paint will be alive. Dad, a wow! More alive than this? That wave is gigantic! Ah, <laughs> in the midst of chaos, there is a point of stability. Mount Fuji. Huh, it kind of looks like one of the waves. Yes, but the waves will come and go. The mountain does not change. It is always there. It is a reminder of the divine energy and is seen as sacred. So, the mountain has more power than the waves. Da -da, wow! There's power everywhere in that painting. <laughs> but it is a, not a painting. Oh. It is a print. It is a series of images layered one on top of another. The first image is just the outline. It is a printed from a wooden block that had first the drawing pasted to it. Then all the lines carved around to make a stamp over the picture. Then each color is printed on top from a different carved block. One for each color, starting from the lightest to the darkest. It's like a coloring book. Look at this one, Dada. These guys are having a picnic. These guys are having a nice, relaxing time. Dada, whoa! A gigantic waterfall! And they're right on the edge! Scary! Oh, oh. I find it a fun to be on the edge. That is where one finds the endless flow of creativity. Huh? <laughs> well... You must have found that float because this waterfall is very unusual. <laughs> yeah! I can see the slow moving water and the fast falling water both at the same time. That's crazy! And it makes me really feel how big that waterfall is. It flows down forever. <laughs> I just draw what I see. Tiny little people and big, powerful water. Yeah! Just like the other print of the big wave. We are a part of huh? the beauty and immense power of nature that surrounds us. I can do that! <laughs> yeah, I want to do it too. I want to follow my own flow. Thank you, Hokuzai. Your art is so magnificent. Have the courage to ride that wave. Look, Maddie, I'm making a river. Da da flow! This is fun. I'm going to make someone right on the edge of the water. A little oh, tiny oh, person. Oh, 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 and a big yellow sun. <laughs> wow! Cool.
When I moved here, I didn't have many friends. No, no, no. But that's not how the story ends. Oh, no. I tried so hard, maybe too much to be who they wanted me to be. But that just didn't work, cause I'm made to be me. Never try to be someone you're not to please someone else For when they're bored of you, they'll move on to somebody else Your true friends are like diamonds, they're precious and they're rare When you find that friend that you need forever you will always be there So maybe someday I'll find a friend The one that I need And then I'll know what it's like For a friend indeed Well they say you never know Just what's around the bend Well this is true I found a friend my friend until the end We've been through it all together The highs and the lows And that, my friend, is just how the story goes So never try to be someone you're not to please Someone else For when they're bored of you Somebody And they're in. So when you find that friend that you need forever, you will always be there. Oh, maybe someday I'll find a friend, the one that I need, and then I'll know what it's like. the reason why I need you and you need me but I'm thankful to him I got you and you got me yes I'm thankful to him I got you and you got me more thank you so much for watching we really hope you've enjoyed this episode and all the episodes in the series of the artist heart live if you have don't forget to like share and subscribe tell your friends because it could be the very thing that helps them and brings us back for another season don't forget to check out later on this year the artist heart on tour special it'll be season four and we're going to be in italy in lake garda and we'll be visiting uh, riva lamoni uh, garda itself and, and 
Lazisi and so many other really, really awesome and wonderful places. Um, yeah, you can come and check us out, of course, each and every week for new content on bjohnmorris.co.uk. Check us out on social media, of course. And for the final time, namaste, my friends. God bless. Thanks for watching. I think we need to finish with a song. It, it wouldn't be right if we just finished with... Uh, so, so let's finish with the song, shall we? We had no way to stay to flow and leave on a ferry and boat. Economic refugees on the run to Germany. We at the back of Maggie's head in times of tough in Jody land. We upped our tools and work and gear and opted off from Newcastle to here. And dirt and the wrecking and noise Drills and hammers, digs and picks We're mixing concrete, laying bricks There's English, Irish, Scots and love United Nations, what we got Rickies, chippies, every trade German, build and British made
can't listen, let me stay.